Hey guys, Quinn from Canada. In the last video, I covered how to use spreadsheets in order to reference dimensions in a drawing. This leads to a lot of possibilities, including models that the user can customize. So in this tutorial, I want to show you how to take that user input and essentially filter it to prevent the user from dealing harm to the model itself. Grab a beverage, come join me at the computer. All right guys, let's start out by creating a new project. Let's go to spreadsheet, create two new spreadsheets, one, two, then go into part design and we'll create a new body. We'll also create a new sketch. doesn't matter which plane on top is good. And the next thing is create a circle, lock it to the middle, create another circle, lock it to the middle as well, slightly smaller. Make one of the circles 120 millimeter radius and make the other one 100. Close this up, pad out the sketch. 10 millimeters is more than good enough. Click on the top edge, create a sketch. And right over here, create a circle. For now, let's just give it a radius of five and we'll give it a horizontal constraint from here to here of 110. That way we're right in the middle. Close this up and make an extruded cut. And we'll go through all. Okay, so that's the hard part done. Open up your first spreadsheet Open up your second spreadsheet, go over here, close up your chart page, click on your model, and now go to window tile. Just a reminder, whatever one you select at first will appear here, and then the second and third one will tile respectively. So now what I wanna do is set up one of these spreadsheets to be a user input. So let's click on the top spreadsheet right here. Right click and just go to rename and we'll call it user input. The second one here, let's click on it, rename, and we'll change it to math. So now what I wanna do in my math, let's set up two parameters. So we'll set up bolt hole diameter. So the next one, we'll put it down a little bit and we'll call this one number of bolts. Now, let's go to user input and we'll set up the same one here, bolt hole diameter, and we'll set up number of bolts. We'll create an alias. So the quickest way is to do that, double click, control C, click here, paste it right there, hit enter, go down here, copy this guy, click here, paste and enter. And if they've gone yellow, you know that it took. We'll do the same up here in our math. So now what I wanna do is link my user input to my math. So I could just do this by clicking here and saying equals, and I can use either spreadsheet one, because that was the original name of this guy, or I can just use user input. If you're using the name user input, you will have these brackets around it. That signifies that you're looking for a name. So I'll say user input, bolt diameter, click it there, and I'll do the same one for here. So just double click here, user input, number of bolts, and there you go. So now if I add a diameter here, so let's say five millimeters, I'll see it up here in my math and my number of bolts, I'll change that to, let's say four for now. So I wanna go back to my pocket sketch here and I wanna edit it to change this radius here to a diameter. So I'll just delete that, change it to a diameter and I wanna link this to my math. Change it to math dot 
bolt hole diameter. And there we go, we got five millimeters. So now if I close this up, I can just change it in my user input, let's say 10 millimeters, and I'll see it update on my sketch. So the reason I wanna do this with two red sheets is because we're gonna add some processing on this one. So we're gonna take the raw user input here, we're gonna see if it matches our criteria, and then we're gonna update it. So the first criteria that we wanna block off is of course, the minimum size because you know some users just going to go in here and say minus one millimeter now notice how when i change it to minus one millimeter the justification changed to the left side from the right side well that means it thinks it's text so take out the unit of measure to really make it minus one so you'll notice that this hole hasn't changed here and our sketch is now faulted out. That's a bad time. Let's fix that up. Now, the first thing I'll do is I'll move this number here again. And the reason I wanna do that is because I don't wanna type in user input, bolt hole diameter all the time. I just wanna to refer to it as A3 from now on. So, you know, sometimes you just gotta work smarter, not harder. So equals user input, and we wanna make it bolt hole diameter. Hit enter. And now what we want to do is set up a conditional statement for the minimum value of the bolt. And the way you do that is I can say equals, make sure it's a capital, A3 is larger than zero, question mark. So if A3 is greater than zero, do this. So if that's the truth, then I want the same value. So I want the A3 value. And then we'll use a colon and put our false statement. So if A3 is not greater than zero, so zero or below, I wanna give it a default value. So I'll make the default value one. So now you'll notice this is set to one because this is less than zero. If I change it up here to say four, you notice that this will become four. The condition is true, so it's the same as this value. So that works great. Our user cannot set the bolt hole to be smaller than one millimeter, but that doesn't stop them from making it outrageously large. Let's say 40, right? What good is that? So it would be really good if I could put an or statement in here and say, hey, if this is this or this, do this, but I can't. It's a single line statement only. So I wanna take this value, which is already filtered, so it can't be below zero. And I want to use that one for my next one. So I'll say equals B3. And I want to give it a minimum value. So I'll say less than or equal to 10, question mark. And if that's true, I want to keep it. So I'll say same value, B3. If it's large, colon. And if it's larger, let's make it. 10. So now watch what happens when I change the input here. Watch down here at uh, C3 on our math. If I make this less than zero, you'll see it will become one thanks to our first statement there. If I try to make this more than 10, so let's say 11, it will make it 10 because that's our maximum thanks to this guy here. So now I want to go back and change this guy here to be this value, which will always be within our range. And now we can play with this as often as we like, and we'll see it change on the model, and we'll never have a model where the hole is way too big or too small. So let's set this back to eight, and let's move on to our next item here. Certain commands in FreeCAD require whole numbers. A good example is the polar array. So let's just polar our pocket right here. Click here, click up here, and under occurrences, let's make them math dot number of bolts. So now you can tell that we have four bolts. If I change that to eight, we'll see more show up. But if I change this to say 3.5, well, look, it's gonna move up. It's gonna make it four. If I make it 8.2, it's gonna change it 
to only display eight. Now that's pretty smart, but it could lead us to problems whenever we have calculations, because I might be using 8.2 in my calculation, but I have eight elements here. So how do we essentially round these numbers? Well, there's an actual command for that, which is pretty helpful, and it's called seal. So the command is equals C-E-I-L, and in this case, I'm just gonna give it a eight, hit enter, and of course it's gonna show up red because I have no value here. For the value here, all I wanna do is go equals user input dot number of bolts. Hit enter, and look what happens. Seal rounds it off to nine. If I change this to 6.2, it'll go to seven. It will go to the next integer past the one that we're at now. If I make it six on the dot, it will stay as six. So that's another way that you could ensure that you're restricting down to whole numbers. And in this case, just like last time, I'll come back up here and I'll change this to say equals B8. So now as I change this value here, nine, it will take it, 9.2, it will round it up to 10. All right, guys, that's it. Let me know what you thought. Is this a good idea? Are these practices you're gonna start using? Do you think they're not useful? All comments are welcome down below. And like always, guys, thank you for watching, and don't forget to scotch scribe. Nazdrovia.